Hi, today I'm going to talk about rag on fire using knowledge graphs. Healthcare is swamped with data. The promise of AI and large language models is that they're going to help us to understand that data, answer questions about that data. In my last video, I talked about Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. You can go check out that video where I go in depth into what it is and how it works. But for our purposes here, let's quickly review. RAG is when we take some curated data, do what we call embedding or vectorizing, which is to create a numeric representation of it, put it in some kind of vector score. Then we can take a question and create the same sort of numeric representation, which allows us to go to that vector store, get relevant curated data, combine it with the question, and give it to an LLM to get us a answer that's grounded in truth. I also talked about Fast Healthcare Interoperable Resources, or FIRE, which break up the patient record into individual resources that work really well in conjunction with RAG. However, there were several limitations in the approach that I took in my last video. One was that it didn't take into account the interconnected nature of data in healthcare. For example, we might have a blood pressure reading, but that blood pressure reading is not only connected to just a patient, it's also connected to the encounter or office visit where it was taken and to the person who took it and also to potential medication changes that were made at that encounter. The approach also didn't take into account time. It didn't understand the relation of the dates between the pieces of data. For example, with that blood pressure medication changes, we really would like to know what happened afterwards to see if it was effective or not. In order to address both of these issues, we really need a new data model, not just the vector store, which doesn't capture those kind of relationships very well. So I decided to explore knowledge graphs. What is a knowledge graph? Well, let's take a look. Here we have our curated data again. And if we want to represent this data in a graph, we could, for example, create two nodes with an edge that connect them. And we label that with one node is the bird, one node is the speed, and one and the edge in between is the property that connects them. We can go further and take all of our facts and represent it this way. We can go even further and rearrange this a little bit and associate the fact that the bird is an animal, and an animal is a type of thing. This gives us a really rich structure that we can answer all kinds of interesting questions. For example, we could say that a dog's top speed is 45 miles an hour and that a dog is an animal, but it's not a vehicle. Here's a different knowledge graph showing just some of the data about this patient. What I've done here is load some synthetic data from a project called Cynthia and pulled that bundle of fire resources in and created a node per resource and then connected them based on the references that are held within the fire. But are we going to abandon the vector store completely? Does it still have some value to us? Yes. What we can do is we can take the nodes in the knowledge graph and we can create that same numeric representation and project them into the vector index. This way, we can do that same process of taking in a question, turning it into numbers, being able to find the right node to answer that number. Then because that node is connected, we can pull additional information to answer the question. So let's see that in action. For example, we might want to ask a question like, so 
we get an answer like this. From that question of a colon scan, we found some, a colonoscopy and how much it cost. How did that work? Well, somewhere in this massive graph of patient data, there are actually two colonoscopies. One, which happened on 2019, and another, which happened in 2014. Based on our question, we know we want the one in 2014. If we expand this out, we see that it's connected to a number of other elements, including a claim. The claim here has that cost which our answer showed. So what we do is take all of the associated nodes to the correct procedure, send that to the LLM, and the LLM is able to come back with a good answer. In my next video, I'm going to take a deep dive into the code that makes this work. If you're interested in seeing that, I hope you'll check it out. I also want to give a quick shout out to the people at Neo4j Going Meta. They were a big inspiration for large portions of the work that I've shown here. If you enjoyed this content, I hope you'll give me a like. Also, I'd love to get some comments about where you think I should take this research next. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.